You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. The Pet Doctor is sponsored by Ellie Mae Pet Supplements. Visit us at battle-cancer.com for more information on how Ellie Mae Supplements can help your dog. Is your pet stressed out? Does your pet need annual vaccines? Which pet is best for a child? Would you know if your dog was in pain? Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor, where you'll learn everything about keeping your pet healthy and happy. From pet care, pet meds and grooming, to pet food, pet insurance, and dental care, this is the place to find out everything there is to know about pet wellness. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile, or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets because it's your pet. Health matters. Please welcome your pet doctor host, veterinary media consultant and veterinarian, Dr. Bernadine Cruz. America's pet population is growing thanks to advances in pet nutrition, veterinary medicine, and awareness of proactive health measures by pet owners. Our furry companions are living longer and healthier lives. But there are some issues that are still stymieing and frustrating veterinarians and pet owners alike. A pet's decrease in mental sharpness that comes with age. I see it happening to my client's pet. I see it happening to me, and I hate it. Awareness of the need to improve the health of seniors is one of the newest areas of research and outreach in veterinary medicine. A new association, the International Veterinary Senior Care Society, has been formed, and my guest is the recently elected chair of the board of directors, Dave Merrick. We'll be right back after this break. Please have a seat in the waiting room. The doctor will be with you shortly, right after these messages. Did you know cancer is the number one cause of death in dogs? One out of every three dogs is affected by cancer at some point during his lifetime. And half of those dogs affected die. Shocking, isn't it? Symptoms of dog cancer are nonspecific and often lead to a late diagnosis of the disease. But before it reaches an advanced or incurable stage, cancer exhibits mild but recurring symptoms. If you think your dog is losing weight, has a loss of appetite, looking dull and listless, is non-social, or has any sores, swellings, bumps or lumps, or abnormal growth anywhere, it's time to visit the vet to make sure everything's well. This message is brought to you by Ellie Mae Pet Supplements. Ellie Mae is an animal health care company that creates products which focus on improving the overall health and quality of life for your much-loved pet. Visit us at www.battle-cancer.com for more information on dog cancer and how Ellie Mae Supplements can help your dog. Welcome to Sassy Seniors, a show about our fabulous older dogs and cats. I'm your host, Kelly Jackson. You know, I wanted to create a show to really showcase our senior pets. And you know, as the human population ages and lives longer, of course, so are our wonderful pets. But many of us with aging pets, it's so interesting. We have a tough time realizing or really admitting that they are seniors. So in a way, I kind of like to think of our senior pets as, as wise puppies. What do you think about that? Be sure to join us for another dish of Sassy Seniors. And remember, celebrate your senior pets. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio with Dr. Bernadine Cruz. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. Mr. Merrick, thank you so much for being with us today. I know that the sharpness of minds, yours and your pets, is very important to you. How did you get into this? What's your background? Well, I grew up in veterinary medicine. My father is a veterinarian. My grandfather, his three brothers all practiced veterinary medicine. And, um, you know, from a a young age, uh, I worked at at the animal hospital. It was just amazing to see... Uh, the joy that my dad's uh, clients had when when the uh, when their dogs or cats were well taken care of, and there was also a bit of magic there. You know, it's not by mistake that a lot of kids, you know, they want to grow up and be a veterinarian because there's something magical about it. And you know, the magic there is the patients 
can't talk to you. They can't say, hey, doc, uh, I kind of have my hips hurting a little bit or, uh, you know, I'm just feeling off or I'm short of breath. You know, all those type of diagnostic uh, advantages that uh, human doctors have, the veterinarian really has to uh, have a lot uh, more sense about uh, their patient. And um, so I, as, as a kid growing up, I, I saw so many really neat, interesting cases with, with my dad. And then as an adult, I, um, I was actually on staff at the School of Veterinary Medicine here in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, I was their first academic affairs coordinator. And then for the last 20 years, I've been uh, in the animal health industry, working in uh, a lot of different parts of it, introducing products into the market, and hopefully contributing kind of like my dad and my grandfather had. Well, one of the products that I was just recently exposed to, and you were telling me about it, and it's like, wow, this seems so important. One of kind of the unwritten problems with older pets, you wonder about the aches and pains, as you were mentioning, and, oh, bad teeth, and their eyes aren't as good, and gee, doc, you know, we're not being able to call the pet, and it's not hearing us because it's seeming to go deaf. But oftentimes, you know, well, how is it doing mentally? It's like, what do you mean, how's it doing mentally? You know, it's kind of an old dog, and lights are on, and not everybody's home. And we didn't really think we could do anything for our pets and didn't really think we can do much for our humans. But science is changing. Tell us a little bit about the science that you are bringing to humans as well as pets right now. Well, this has been um, one of my best efforts. I just uh, am so thrilled that we have a product called Nutrix on the market for our senior pets. In the United States, it's estimated that there are over 28 million senior pets with at least one sign of this disease called cognitive dysfunction syndrome. Most of us know it as uh, doggy dementia. And unfortunately, a lot of the dog owners and pet owners think of it as as just a normal sign of getting old. The common symptoms of um, they start to get a little anxious or, or panting and pacing around where they normally didn't or the sleep interruptions at night. The dog will wake up the uh, pet owners a couple times during the night and initially the pet owners think their pet has to go out to go to the bathroom or disorientation. Another one that actually happened to my family when I was a kid uh, is, is pets will get stuck in a corner. <laughs> they literally will get in a corner and can't navigate out. And I remember in talking with my father about this, he reminded me of our dog that had that happened. And, uh, you know, as a kid, you think it's, you know, they're just being funny or they're playing with you. But they are seriously in stress and can't navigate. But all you have to do is turn them around and then they wag their tail and they (laughs) walk on. But these are classic symptoms of that uh, disease called cognitive dysfunction syndrome, CDS. Now, As I said, a lot of times pet owners fail to mention some of these symptoms, especially like the inappropriate house soiling or waking up a couple times during the night to their veterinarians because they think uh, it's just a, a process of them getting old. I think what's happening a lot of times, you're exactly right, you know, I get up couple times during the night because I'm not sure if this is dementia or it's just, gee, do I really need to go to the bathroom? But I've had many of my clients come in, tell me exactly what you're telling me right now. And so many times we want to have a specific diagnosis. We want to be able to do a test to be able to say, this is it, to say, this is the medication that we're going to use and we're going to see a response in X number of days. But so many times it's frustrating because I can't give them a diagnosis. I can run every test, you know, and somebody had tons of money and wanted to do MRIs and CAT scans. You're still not going to see anything. But isn't that true in people, too, that we have a lot of the same dementia issues? And would you say it's similar to, like, Alzheimer's in people? Well, exactly, especially the... uh change in sleep patterns. We see that in Alzheimer's. Uh, I think they call it uh, sundown syndrome. And um, the other thing with regard to diagnostics is, and this is why it's important that your audience understand that if they suspect any of this, they really do need to contact their veterinarian because many of these behaviors can be uh, cognitive issues. They can be other medical issues and they can be both. 
you know, I was talking with one of our uh, advisors to our company, uh, Dr. Gary Landsberg, and he's a uh, diplomat in behavior, one of the most renowned veterinary behaviorists uh, in North America. And that's something that he has stressed to his colleagues is that, you know, these symptoms uh, can be both a medical issue as well as a cognitive issue. So it's, it's really key that, that they work with their veterinarian. And with regarding Nutrix, Nutrix active ingredient is a calcium binding protein. And it's got a great story. 40 years ago, it was APL corn was discovered. And the discovery of this led to the understanding that all the nerve cells, the, the brain cells, have calcium binding proteins. And what they do is they make the calcium level in our brain cells balanced. And when you don't have balance, what you have is a disruption. A lot of people, the neurologists will explain it where the signal is coming in like a radio station that isn't quite tuned in. And then eventually you get cellular death. They see this. Uh, lack of this calcium binding protein, they see this in Alzheimer's patients, MS, autism, Parkinson's, Huntington's disease. They have proven it uh, to have a, uh, an effect on sleep and memory. It's just amazing. And in fact, this discovery 40 years ago when it was initially looked at and had, how it has had such significant importance in healthcare today it won the Nobel Prize in chemistry for 2008. So this simple discovery, you know, led to all this other understanding of an important piece of the puzzle. But how do you diagnose it is very difficult. And so what a lot of veterinarians will do is they will supplement with Nutrix this calcium binding protein. And so we have seen a great benefit. A typical case, you get a senior pet owner with a senior pet. <laughs> and... And, you know, they really are looking for to increase the quality of life of their old pet because, uh, you know, quite frankly, our, our pets love us unconditionally and they give us so much benefit. In fact, I'm certain that my pets give me a lot more benefit than I try to give back to them. So this older couple came in to see their doctor and said, our dog is waking us up two to three times a night and now we can't go on anymore. We're a wreck. Well, you know that getting sleep deprived for people can lead to serious health issues. And so they actually were discussing the possibility of putting their dog to sleep. Well, she had suggested that they at least, you know, try Nutrix. Well, within seven days, that dog is sleeping through the night and the owners aren't even thinking about putting their dog to sleep anymore. You know, you get a good night's sleep and, and a lot of things can cascade to the right way. And what happened is then we started getting report after report of the same type of thing of the sleep pattern going back to normal within about a week. I find this interesting, but I think a lot of people like myself included when I first heard about this is like, where have I been? I try to stay up on what's new in veterinary medicine and human medicine. And is nobody talking about this particular chemical? The scientists are, and the researchers are. In fact, our recent uh, independent research we did uh, on beagles that showed a, a huge improvement, the results were significant enough that, in fact, this research was presented in Paris, France, two weeks ago at the International Congress of Alzheimer's Disease Research. So it's in that stage where people are now just talking about it. The other aspect of it is, is that Quincy Bioscience, the makers of Prevagen, that's the human product, they're the first and the only company that has been able to produce apio corn outside of its, uh, where it's naturally found. And where it was first discovered was in a rare jellyfish in the Puget Sound. And what interested the scientists 40 years ago was this jellyfish lit up at night. <laughs> and they were wondering, you know, how does this bioluminescence, that's lighting up naturally, uh, this bioluminescence happen? And they thought this would make a great tool for research in uh, biological marker. Because at that time, they were basically only using little radioactive markers. And, and you know, that can be dangerous. So the discovery of how this worked as a calcium binding protein then led towards all those other discoveries, of course, and volumes and careers have been made around this thing, but no one could produce it enough. You know, and of course you can't, there's no such thing as the uh, glowing jellyfish dairy 
farm where they milk the <laughs> milk the protein out. So, uh, and we don't want to destroy the environment by killing all the little jellyfish off. Yeah. So Quincy uh, Bioscience actually found a way to make it and produce the protein that mirrors what's in uh, my brain, uh, yours, uh, our dogs and cats. It mirrors that calcium binding protein. Now, a lot of people may be thinking, okay, well, this sounds interesting, and how they ever made the leap from glowing jellyfish to helping dementia is science fiction, and we won't even go there. But they, okay, calcium, I'm supposed to take calcium being a woman, and I want to keep myself from having osteoporosis. Now, taking extra calcium doesn't help? Well, no, because um, let me backtrack on that. It does help. And it is important. It's uh, almost, I, I don't know of any doctor that would not recommend calcium supplements for uh, women. So that's well proven. Uh, the difference here is this is a calcium binding protein that works within the, the brain cells. And the body recognizes that within the nervous system. And it's a very small amount. And it's utilized basically just to keep the right balance of calcium in that brain cell instead of too much. Now, one of the first experiments that uh, Quincy Bioscience did was on stroke. And we know that during a stroke that there is a huge influx of calcium uh, rushing into the brain cells and very quick cellular death. They also noticed that the cells almost immediately at that, you know, during that assault stopped producing calcium binding proteins. It just, it's just that uh, well known on this event. APL corn, Prevagen, was shown to protect 50% of cells during a stroke and 62% of cells after the stroke. So that was one of the very first experiments that they had done to say, yes, we have something that is neuroprotective here. And they, they showed that during such a quick event as a stroke. The other thing is with regard to calcium binding proteins and its role in the nervous system is that it is a part of the cell. And the neurologists and people that study diseases of the brain, so whether it's specifically with autism or MS or Alzheimer's, they are aware of that one piece of the puzzle and that the cells in that area of the brain that's being affected, also one of the pieces of the puzzle is they lack the ability to make enough calcium binding proteins. We're chatting right now with Dave Merrick, and he's with Quincy Animal Health and giving us some great information on ways that we can have those mature pets of ours live a healthier, happier life, and our enjoyment of them continues. We'll be right back after the short break and learn other ways that this particular supplement is helping pets and people. We'll be right back. Please have a seat in the waiting room. The doctor will be with you shortly, right after these messages. Love your pets but wish their medications were a lot less expensive? They are at 1-800-PET-MEDS. You'll not only save on flea and heartworm medications, but on prescriptions for arthritis, incontinence, thyroid, and more. And you get fast service, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Plus, our licensed pharmacists ensure accuracy, monitor drug interaction, and more. See why over 5 million people have trusted their pet's health to 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Call now or order online. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash doctor, D-O-C-T-O-R, to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more at PetMeds.com. Did you know cancer is the number one cause of death in dogs? One out of every three dogs is affected by cancer at some point during his lifetime, and half of those dogs affected die. Shocking, isn't it? Symptoms of dog cancer are nonspecific and often lead to a late diagnosis of the disease. But before it reaches an advanced or incurable stage, cancer exhibits mild but recurring symptoms. If you think your dog is losing weight, has a loss of appetite, looking dull and listless, is nonsocial, or has any sores, swellings, bumps or lumps, or abnormal growth anywhere, it's time to visit the vet to make sure everything's well. This message is brought to you by Ellie Mae Pet Supplements. Ellie Mae is an animal health care company that creates products which focus on improving the overall health and quality of life for your much-loved pet. 
Visit us at www.battle-cancer.com for more information on dog cancer and how Ellie Mae supplements can help your dog. Hi, everybody. I'm Megan Blake here with my sidekick, Super Smiley. <laughs> the giant mutt and spokes dog for throwaways. You're listening to Pet Life Radio, and I'd like to tell you about our brand new show, A Super Smiley Adventure. Our show explores adventures with animals. They can be traveling, out in the world trips, or inner journeys where our animals lead us to inspiration and self-discovery, or just plain fun adventures. Join us here on Pet Life Radio on A Super Smiley Adventure. <laughs> Good boy. The Pet Doctor is sponsored by Ellie Mae Dog Supplements. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio with Dr. Bernadine Cruz. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. Mr. Merrick, this is absolutely fascinating information, and I feel like I am just so far behind the curve and learning more and more. So yes, this is such a common thing where we just see these older pets, cats as well as dogs, just seeming kind of like the lights are on and not everybody's home. We always want to use something that's going to help, but we also don't want to have any adverse side effects. What are the pros and cons of using this Nutrix? And I love the name, Nutrix. So you're teaching your pet a new trick. Well, you know, as Dr. Lambrecht, he's also one of our veterinary advisors, and Dr. Landsberg had stated that this mirrors the exact protein that is already in the brain. So there would be no known contraindications or no side effects because if, let's say, we're supplementing oxygen. Well, we all know we need to breathe oxygen, your body recognizes the oxygen that we're using right now, right out of the air, but it also recognizes the oxygen that comes in a green tank that's found in every surgical theater <laughs> at the practice. So, so the body says, oh, it's oxygen. I like it and uses it appropriately, whether it's coming from the green tank or if it's coming from uh, the air. And, and that's a good analogy to APO corn or Nutrix, is that the body recognizes it and utilizes it appropriately. Now, I I do have to caution your listeners that our Nutrix is really yummy. (laughs) And and, and dogs and cats just love it. So, But it does have real pork liver as part of the flavor base. This flavor base has been used worldwide. It's approved in all of North America, South America, Europe, etc. And there's been literally billions of doses on this chewable tab used by pets very safely. However, every once in a while you get a pet that has allergies to, you know, certain foods. So in the very rare case, but again, this is why consulting with your veterinarian is is so key because they'll know if your dog already has allergies that it might uh, have an issue with Nutrix. But again, that is so rare that if that actually occurs, that person should go out and buy a lottery ticket because (laughs) they they actually are one, you know, starting on a streak of, of rare things going on in their life. So it's very safe. What if the pet all of a sudden says, ooh, this is really tasty, somehow (laughs) finds that bottle, knocks it over and says, you know, if one was good, ooh, 10 is even better. How about the side effect of that? Well, we actually did have that unfortunate case happen. And the owners, when they talked to their veterinarian, they said, we didn't want them that smart that they could actually open up the bottle. (laughs) (laughs) And what happened is, is the dogs figured out a way to get it off the counter and they worked on it and worked on it and got it open and ate all the tabs, which were about at the time 50 left. Nothing happened to them. But generally speaking, you know, and, and again, your veterinarian will share this even when you're changing the, the, your pet's diet. You do it slowly so there isn't any uh, loose stool. But that's about what would happen, you know, if in case they ate the whole bottle. At most, they would have a change in that diet. It could cause some loose stool. But on these two dogs that, you know, shared this bottle, they had no bad side effects. And our safety data, we went up to 5,000 milligrams per kilogram. So 5,000 mg per kick, and our dose is at 0.23 mg per kick. That sounds pretty safe. Basically, after 5,000 X, we stopped. (laughs) We said it's safe. 
what I find also listening to your explanation right now is like, okay, this is something that the body normally makes. Your analogy to oxygen, I think, was really very good. But I know there's also that blood-brain barrier. So that is that safety device that keeps chemicals that are in the outside of the body, many times things that we ingest, from getting into the brain. So this blood-brain barrier sees this apiocorn and goes, oh, that's okay, and lets it cross. Is that correct? That's a great explanation of it. What had worried some of the veterinarians and some of the neurologists initially was taking our product orally, would the stomach denature it? You know, would the stomach acids just churn it up and, uh, you know, basically make it null and void? So we actually did what they call PK analysis, pharmacokineticates, which showed our protein passes through the stomach and into the blood, and then passes into the blood into the cerebral spinal fluid. And so we followed its path through there. And we uh, proved that the protein does remain intact and uh, goes into the brain uh, for a positive result. Oh. But, you know, the, um, the science over the last 10 years on what proteins pass through the stomach and which ones don't have been very important in a lot of areas of medicine. And so they have actually discovered quite a few proteins that do make it through the stomach. There is such research that's being done that is just fascinating, so amazing. I'm so glad that I'm a veterinarian now that have various things to offer where in the past I would just have to throw up my hands and say, there's nothing that I can do about this. What is the age that most pet owners should start thinking about giving their pet a supplement such as a Nutrix? Well, and as you know, doctor... You guys have this saying, senior by seven, <laughs> and that, that's, a, you know, people remember that. But as your listeners know that, you know, some of the smaller dogs, they're starting that, that senior age thing at about eight, nine, or ten. But if they're a giant breed, like a Great Dane, they're senior at four. And in the practice, people are starting to look at those type of things that seniors get with the giant breeds at a much younger age. So rule of thumb, the smaller the dog, the little bit later these things start to initiate. The typical aging signs come about a little bit later in the smaller dogs. And in the giant breeds, they come very early. And so with, you know, I really believe in the prevention. And so people could even go on to, we have a new website. Our current website with lots of information is Nutrix.com. Could you spell that, please? N-E-U-T-R-I-C-K-S, new okay. N-E-U tricks okay. dot com. And that's got our research. It's got clinical results. A lot of veterinarians and clients have uh, reported back to us, even, even providing pictures. And we show uh, basically how it's worked in the practice and, and how it's worked in the lab. I even have that uh, stroke data on it from the experiment uh, on the website to show people. So it's very interesting, but the new one, too, is called olddogsurvey.com, Old Dog Survey. And on there, we let the uh, pet owner take a, an old dog survey. And basically, it, it, it's kind of long, but it's really helpful because at the end, you get a multi-page report that shows the cognitive levels of your dog, and they can be just fine. And what I really encourage your listeners to do is to share that, copy that report uh, with their veterinarian. They would love to have it in the file, and it gives a good baseline. Or if, if it comes out where there are clear signs that there could be cognitive issues going on, then it is important for them to, it's really crucial for them to contact their veterinarian because, uh, as I said before, it could be, you know, this disorientation. It could be cognitive. It could be a heart issue, <laughs> you know, or that inappropriate house oiling. It could be uh, uh, cognitive. It could be a kidney issue. Heck, it could, could be, be all sorts of things. Yeah. But one of the yeah. things that you keep mentioning, and I'm a cat owner, and I'm going to possibly take offense to this. How about my older cats? Oh, we are just in the end stages to launch our new tricks for cats. Ah, good. 
and I've had very good results. It seems to take longer, and I don't know why. Instead of the, you know, the house soiling issues with dogs, we've been hearing being stopped within three, four days, the sleep issues within a week, disorientation and old habits coming back in about 14 to 21 days. But with the cats, we've been noticing there has been a difference on the positive 14 to 20 days out. And I got to tell you, this is kind of funny. This is on my old cat, my my own old cat, <laughs> Spicy. You know, he was doing the typical older cat things, a lot of sleep in, get up and he's, you know, kind of looks around. You can tell he's a little bit out of it. And these, of course, are everything that I think is going on. But then his coat wasn't as nice as before. And that always concerns me. It's when my old cats let go of their coat. You know, cats love to have bathed themselves. They love to right. keep themselves very clean. And so for me, that was of concern. And so I, I took my, uh, my cat to my favorite veterinarian. And I'm not going to say who because there's 10 of them. <laughs> <laughs> And They're all, all your favorite, yes. I know. And, and my dad's retired. He's living down in Peachtree City, Georgia, so it's a little bit of a commute from Madison, Wisconsin, to visit dad. But uh, so we, uh, I used uh, Nutrix for cat. It's a really uh, palatable sprinkle that goes on their food first thing in the morning. And, and by that's the way, smart because cats hate taking supplements of any sort. Oh, and they, they just love this. And, oh, and good. with the sprinkle and with any of our products, it's always best dosed in the morning, uh, first thing. And uh, so a couple weeks later, he was now walking around with a spring in his step. And he started doing this thing, which unfortunately annoys me. When he doesn't get enough attention paid, he climbs up on something and then starts pushing it off the shelf. <laughs> and and I'll, you'll hear him going, Row, and all of a sudden you look up and then push. And you're like, spice. And, and uh, I thought to myself, oh, now, now I did it. This is <laughs> he's, he's back to his old self again. And then about um, on the fourth week, going in there, uh, it was specifically a uh, different coat. And, of course, then I noticed him paying attention to himself, bathing himself a lot more often and things like that. So I'm just so happy to have Spice back. And at the same time, I'm kind of kicking myself because he has some very annoying habits. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of fun to have that annoying habit back again. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> it is. It is. Here we have this great product for pets, cats and dogs, but you also alluded to the fact of Prevagen that it sounds as though it's the same product that you're using in people. What are the indications for people? Just kind of that old age, oh yes, I went upstairs and I forgot, huh, what was I coming up here for? Is that what we're using it in people? We have had a lot of success in all different types of areas. Um, In fact, that's how I first... Uh, heard of the active ingredient was the founder of, of Quincy Bioscience and makers of Prevagen is Mark Underwood. Mark was on the radio, and uh, I thought, wow, this could benefit uh, you know our pets. And what I come to find out is that they have done studies and showed a lot of success with memory, with sleep issues. And, and just think about it. Here you have a product that you take in the morning that doesn't have a contraindication, it's a natural part of the brain, and affects positively your sleep, where many other sleep uh, products, you know, uh, have all kinds of warnings, you know, I mean, all kinds of warnings against them, and they're taken at night, and you wake up a little bit, whatever, but we have, are just in the end stages of a very large MS study, And the executive director of the Wisconsin Veterinary Medical Association up here, she has recently retired, but one of her lifelong friends, and this woman is an author, and she writes a monthly article in the uh, major newspapers here in Wisconsin on women with handicaps. Uh, She developed MS, mid-30s, three kids. You know, that's kind of the typical uh, diagnosis range. And now she's in her mid-60s. Over seven, eight years ago, she's in one of the last stages where uh, she's uh, in a motorized wheelchair. Her fingers have collapsed into her palms. And this is how she's been for many years. Now, she's been on our study, and actually because she was in one of the later stages of MS, our science staff put her as an N of one. Um, 
just by herself and gave her uh, uh, the Prevagen at a higher dose. Um, today, uh, she types with her fingers. They look like everybody else's hands, where before she had to have a Coke bottle around her fingers to do her nails, when she mm-hmm. would have to do her nails. Now, she uses her fingers like you and I do. They look a little bit like she has first stage of rheumatoid arthritis, you know, but she's using it, and she's thrilled to death. And she can, uh, as she told me about a month ago, she gets herself out of bed four days out of the week. And this is remarkable. You know, we've had success with patients with MS, they also have parents have, have used this with their kids with uh, autism. And the teachers told them that the kids are not under as much stress during the day and they're paying attention. And with, you know, your listeners who have friends or, or even their own children who have uh, autism, you know, the stress uh, will trigger those uh, repetitive movement and behaviors and things like that. And so we will be shortly uh, starting a study with 3,000 patients uh, suffering from autism. They are starting a study uh, two weeks ago in Colorado uh, in Alzheimer's. But right now, on these major, like Alzheimer's, the only data we have is from people that have used Prevagen. And, you know, one of the typical stories is the wife will call back up and say, did my husband call and cancel his order? No, don't. He's doing great. (laughs) Bring it back. Or I have a lot of friends who are doctors that take it. And and people that are are in their mid-50s up to uh, mid-70s and even 80s. One of my good friends who's a 70-year-old research scientist um, told me that after six weeks of taking Prevagen, What he noticed was he does a lot of reports for the FDA. He's the head of research and development for a uh, pharmaceutical company. And, of course, the reporting and all the reports to the FDA, they have to be exact. And there's a lot of them. And what he told me was this. He said, Dave, my sleep is more productive. I said, what exactly do you mean by that? He said, I'm not sleeping longer. I'm sleeping better. In fact, I remember my dreams. They're very vivid. And I said, yeah, that's been reported a lot, kind of like when you're a kid. And he said, exactly. And he said, but more important for me was I had all these reports to do, and I knew what I wanted to say. I just couldn't get the pen to paper. But now, he said, it's like 25 years ago. I know what I want to say. Boom, boom, boom. I'm getting these reports out and done. He goes, I guess it is the uh, Prevagen. <laughs> you know? so, and then that's pretty typical. I myself have taken Prevagen now for over a year, and... Uh, uh, I had a very similar timetable as my good friend, the doctor, research scientist, and you know I noticed results after about two months. So it's uh, you know minimally it'll do no harm. Both and, of these products, uh, Dave, sound awesome, and I think we should always caution before you start treating yourself. You know, definitely check with your MD for yourself. Check with your veterinarian for your pet, making sure there's nothing else going on. These products, Prevagen, correct me if I'm wrong, is available over the counter. So you can go to your drugstore to pick it up. How about the product Nutrix? Is that going to be over the counter so people just pick it up? How do they get it? Well, right now it's uh, available through licensed veterinarians only. And one of the reasons as we educate the public, you know, that's the key issue here is pet owners right now are just learning that many of these signs of cognitive disease are just that, a cognitive disease rather than just growing old and there's nothing they can do about it, but they could also be something else. And that's why we really are encouraging people to visit their veterinarian, get a a senior pet wellness checkup, and minimally that's a place to start. So that's why uh, Nutrix is available through licensed veterinarians only now. Are there alternative medications to using something like Nutrix? What else is out there that people could use or veterinarians Uh, recommend? Yeah, veterinarians have recommended there is one FDA-approved product called Anapril. It's a selegiline. And um, it is approved for cognitive issues as well as um, Cushing's. Then there is an uh, antioxidant-based product called CenterLife, and it's a mixture of things. And then there's a, a product called uh, NovaFit, which is SAM-E, S-adenosyl. And S-adenosyl has a lot of good science behind it with regard to uh, liver health. 
Uh, that's where most of the research is done. It helps the body make its own antioxidants. That's the. I mean, I, I actually hesitated a second because I was going to go off into uh, a bunch of highfalutin words. <laughs> Well, we would take our red wine, so our pets could take something like NovaFit. That sounds good. And yes, I'm a firm believer in using antioxidants for myself as well as for my clients' pets, too. Right. And this is the, the issue that the veterinarians have come across, is that, you know, if there is a calcium mediation problem going on, and which it very well could be, if you are doing a great antioxidant, as far as the brain cell is concerned, it's like having a shiny brand new car, only you don't put any oil in the engine. You know, the antioxidants will really help that outer membrane from the oxidation of salt. But if inside there is getting a calcium buildup and cellular death through that, it doesn't matter how shiny that car is. And again, same thing with the FDA approved product. It helps the signaling between two cells. Well, if one of those cells is dying or the signal is disrupted, you know, becoming like a radio station that's not tuned in, it's very tough for those two cells to communicate. So it really Uh, sounds like it's a multimodal affair sometimes where you need a combination of products. Right, right. And, you know, I personally, like you, I really like uh, antioxidants, and I've seen them work uh, very well. And there's, you know, you can supplement with uh, good antioxidants. You can get them in diets. Oh, heck, the foods that are are available to our pets today are so much better. You know, I better think than that, what we're eating, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's, it's um, my dog is very fit, and I'm pretty good at. Um, have given her the right amount and things like that, and uh, I'm absolutely awful with myself. <laughs> so, yeah. I've been speaking right now. We could go on, I could tell, for a long time with this. And I'm speaking right now with Dave Merrick, and he's with Quincy Animal Health. He's been telling us about a product that sounds like it may really help many of our mature cats and dogs turn that light on so we can enjoy their presence and they can enjoy ours for hopefully many more years to come. So, Dave, thank you very much for being with us today. Oh, thank you, Doctor. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And just the opportunity to uh, share with people about senior pet wellness. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, there's a lot more senior people, a lot more senior pets, and we all want to live the longest, healthiest life possible. So thanks for listening. My name is Dr. Bernadine Cruz. You've been listening to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio. Please tune in again next week. We'll have some more information on how to make you the best possible pet owner you can be. Thanks for listening. This can be a wonderful addition to your life. Keeping them healthy and happy is important. Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor with veterinary media consultant and veterinarian Dr. Bernadine Cruz. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile, or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets. The Pet Doctor, on demand every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com. The Pet Doctor is sponsored by Ellie Mae Pet Supplements. Ellie Mae is an animal health care company that creates products which focus on improving the overall health and quality of life for your much-loved pet. Visit us at www.battle-cancer.com for more information on dog cancer and how Ellie Mae Supplements can help your dog. 